Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, happy glorious 4th. This is July the 4th, American Independence Day. I'm starting to put a few clips together, but this video likely won't come out until the 18th of July. I already have one in the lineup for, for next weekend. But one, I'll, I'll put clips together gradually over the next couple of weeks, and hopefully you'll see some progress that way. But this is the seed bomb. If you notice, if you remember my video when I put the seed bomb down here in the greenhouse and started watering it. Within 48 hours, those smaller green leaves that you see, whatever that plant is, had leaved out. And there are more coming every day. Some of the larger ones, sort of at the back there, uh, closer to that little white marker that I put in, I think those are lupins. They look like what a lupin seedling looks like. But I was amazed at how quickly the thing germinated. So keeping an eye on it. I know the lupins probably won't bloom this year um, being started this late. If, I, if they'd been started really early in the spring there was a chance of them blooming this year but, but they are uh, biennial or perennial. I never can decide which but they certainly I have one plant in the garden that I, I know the same plant has been coming for a number of years so I guess they must be perennial. But, interested to see what all the other ones look like. It's supposed to be uh, plants that are flowers that will attract butterflies. And I hope, remember, to give you another look at it just before I finish the, the video to put it up two weeks from now so we can see how much it's progressed. This is the Costata Romanesca, the Italian heirloom zucchini. Um, that's only the second female blossom that it's had that's opened up. There are more coming along there. And with that second one, there was a male blossom. So I hand pollinated it. I never like to trust whether the bees will get in here in the greenhouse or not. The first blossom that it had was female and I nothing to pollinate it with. So I clipped that off and had it fried. The small zucchini and the blossom was quite tasty. Sometime I plan to do the uh, sort of like a tempura batter that they're done in. Hopefully I'll do a video on that sometime this summer because I have a number of these plants out in the garden and I should be able to get a lot of blossoms at one time, but they're not as far advanced as this one is. What I'm finding interesting about it is most uh, zucchini plants are a bush plant. This isn't a running or cl climbing along like most winter squash would, but it is growing differently. If you can see there, the, the main stem is going off to the right and has some more uh, blossom buds and things on it. So it's a different, different type of a, of a zucchini. It, just, it grows differently than any of the commercial variety that I've been growing over the years. Looking forward to eating that one in a few days time. I don't like them to get too big. I'll let that go for another two or three days and then I will have that and see what it tastes like. Excuse the jiggly jiggly. I am hand holding the camera for this little clip. This is the bed that had my asparagus in it that really got overrun with tansy. Still got tansy growing off to the side here. And I put uh, a lot of uh, my chicken manure, some of which was relatively fresh, and was wondering if these plants would survive in it. Well, so far, so good. They're looking quite healthy, actually, so that evidently it wasn't too strong for them. But what I want to show you is evidently it's almost impossible to kill asparagus. Not that I wanted to kill it anyway. But here, this one has come up by the outside of where the cardboard is. Hopefully that stayed in focus. Another one here. Up in the center, that one came out. A little bit further on, that's a chili pepper growing up, being held up by the asparagus plants. Another one has come up over here at the edge. 
and there's another one in the background over there. <laughs> As I say, I didn't really want to kill it anyway, but I couldn't see any way of salvaging it. I would say by the looks of things, I will get uh, enough asparagus next year probably for a meal or two as well. And just notice there's another one coming down in here. Asparagus does not die easily. And that's my cosmos plant in the middle there. I assume that is one of my nemesis, the <laughs> voles. It is alive, I just touched it with my toe and it moves, but I don't think it's all that healthy. I don't know what's wrong with him, or her. But now that I'm face to face with it, of course, I don't have the nerve to kill it myself. And what difference would it make killing one? I must have thousands of the things anyway. I don't understand why it's quite so lethargic here. I've just picked some garlic scape, so I'll poke it a bit with a garlic scape. It's alive. Maybe just taking a nap, I guess. Hopefully. Well, before I start talking about this, let me just say that little creature in the last clip I went out and checked on him a half hour later and it was gone. So I don't know what its problem was. It maybe was just too scared. When I, I was so close to it, it just froze. But it had vanished within 30 minutes anyway. If you remember one of my earlier videos this spring, I mentioned when I was planting in this roostote bed here that there was a lot of mycelium um, down close to the soil level the sort of root structure that mushrooms form from, well, they've started to grow. Look at the size of these things. we are got to pick this biggest one. <laughs> I have a new, whoops, I'm not going to get that back in focus, am I? I have a new book that, uh, Is supposed to make mushroom collecting and eating a, a safe practice. Uh, I'm not going to eat this one. For one thing, the book says don't eat anything that has gills, and that's got gills underneath of it, so good chance there it's, it's poisonous. But the size of them, and they're popping up everywhere here. Uh, not slimy now, but when it's before it opens up completely, it's got a slimy top to it. Uh, might know. I've got mushrooms growing, but you can't eat the things. Hopefully I'm focused on that tiny little plant. That is an agretti. A-G-R-E-T-T-I. An Italian uh, plant, which I think from my research is, is uh, perennial. Sort of a shrub, I guess, uh, when it's full grown. Um, if you follow Attila's Garden, channel that I recommended some time, some time ago. He puts out very interesting videos. Uh, I believe he brought seed in from Italy and I don't think he had any success with them germinating. He never mentioned that he did in the, anyway. Um, I did some research along with things that he had told me. It has to be extremely fresh seed. Uh, they just don't germinate after a or a relatively short period of time. I bought a package of seed from Vessi, from Vessi's now, from Richter's, and planted them. Uh, kept the area watered, didn't see anything. At one point I saw something that had a little red, reddish colored stem, and I thought it doesn't look like a weed, so I won't pull that out. Went away, forgot about it, and came back a couple of weeks ago, and just happened to be doing something in that area, and I have one. I think it must have been that one little little plant uh, the way it's described, it reminds me of a, a seashore green that we get here called Goose Tongue Greens. It supposedly has a sort of salty flavor to it. I'm going to take one little leaf here. I'm going to pull it into the ground. Oh, yeah. Very nice flavor. It's used in, uh, it's cooked and used with pasta and all that sort of thing. Um, 
supposedly perennial, but of course will not be perennial here. I'm thinking what I will do is, if I can keep it alive and it gets a little bigger, sometime in early fall I'll pot it up and take it in the house for the winter, see if I can't bring it over. I don't expect that it will either bloom or have any seeds this year, so I would like to get some fresh seed from it at least, so maybe if I bring it over and plant it out again next year I'll at least get some seeds and stand a chance of growing a little more of it. Well, that's one Italian uh, vegetable that he recommended, and now I'm going to plant the seeds for a second one. Well, on my way out of the greenhouse, I picked the first, or pulled the first, of my beets. I've never grown this variety before. The seeds were a gift from one of my subscribers. Thank you very much. The variety is called Robin, and evidently it's a variety that's grown by market gardeners to sell along with beet greens and it says that they would be one to two inches in diameter within 35 days of planting them out. Well, I haven't really kept track of the days, but if it's, 30, it is, if it's more than 35, it isn't many days more than 35. They're performing as advertised. There's a smaller one there, but uh, you, that would be great. I'm going to have those for lunch. Uh, I'll probably start the beets first. But I'll add the greens once I've washed them, whatever. I'll add them to the same um, pot uh, once I figure the beets are half to three quarters cooked or whatever. And I love beet greens as much as the beets. So I'm going to start more of those today. I brought the seed packet out with me. Plan was to start more anyway. Uh, as I pull these out, uh, I'll be oh, maybe two weeks from now or so when the seedlings are, are large enough. I'll be replanting the same area to have some this fall. I don't think I mentioned when I was making that first clip of the day on the Agretti in the uh, greenhouse that this is July the 7th. Not that that makes any great amount of difference, I guess. The next thing that I'm going to try to grow here, uh, I'm not really sure of either pronunciation, but it's Sculpit. S-C-U-L-P-I-T or Stridolo and it, this seed company calls it an herb I think once again in Italy it's perennial uh, evidently it blooms and is sort of invasive it will drop its seeds if it gets a chance to bloom I don't know me starting it this late in the year if that will happen or not but once again this is something that uh, um, Attila's Garden Channel is growing and you pick off the little growing ends, little growing tips, and uh, I don't know, eat them in salads, I guess. I'm not sure if you can do some cooking with them or not, but I'm always anxious to try something new. And I like the idea that it's invasive. <laughs> Most people don't like invasive things, but I uh, appreciate anything that comes back in this miserable climate. I'm only going to grow four pots. Uh, I'm saving the rest of the seeds until next year start them off in the spring I've already pre-wet this soil it's some of that uh, organic pro mix and I'm scattering a fair amount of seeds on the surface of each one Let's see what happens I guess I've already as I said pre-wet that but I have some other soil here just to crumble over the top of it they're very small seeds so I didn't want to bury them that in and hope for the best. Well, I'll show you what else is here on the bench. I just uh, finished planting some more beets in that flat. But this flat, I don't know if you can see them or not, they're quite small, but my rutabagas have been planted in that for a few days and they're coming up good. Um, I start them, <laughs> seems like later every year. I don't want the gigantic things like I grew with the uh, community garden last year. I would like a small one that's, I don't know, pound, two pounds, something like that. So, And I don't like to harvest them uh, until we've had frost because that makes them sweeter. So These will be ready to go in but probably pretty close to the end of July before I'll transplant them. And I have a second sowing of uh, 
the butter crunch lettuce. That's been delicious. I've eaten several heads of it. It hasn't bolted yet, but it's looking like it might any day start to bolt. The weather's warmer and the heads are almost fully grown. So I'll be taking those out soon and they'll probably be chicken feed and these ones will get transplanted. Well, that will do for today, I guess. July the 8th, and we have the ceremonial picking of the first ripe tomato. <laughs> the only ripe tomato at this point. Actually, it was on the plant when I brought it out from the light garden in the house. Tiny little thing. And so it was the very first tomato to form. So, of course, it's the first one to ripen. And it is one of the coal tomatoes. The only variety that I'm growing. Or at least the only variety that I started from seed. Um, get you back in there. They are a bit larger than this normally. This first one is quite small. I uh, have got a couple of volunteer plants. One in particular that's looking quite nice. And I don't know what they are. I almost always grow heritage um, open pollinated varieties. So. Hopefully it's just one of the ones that I've grown in here in the last year or two where a tomato was allowed to fall on the ground and decay and leave its seeds, but I'll see what it, uh, see what it produces. It's already got blossom buds starting on it and it isn't anywhere near as tall as the, as the coal plants are. And I have lots of green tomatoes on the coal, so within the next couple of weeks I'll start to get quite a few ripe tomatoes. I had my first Costata Romanesca, the uh, Italian heirloom zucchini yesterday, and it was delicious. I have another one opened up this morning, but only have yesterday's blossoms in the male variety. So, I peel off the leaves, and that's covered with pollen. I will pollinate it by hand. Worked very well with the one that I had yesterday. And pollinated it several days before I picked it. I'm going to give you a look at the leaves on this thing if I can. It's almost like elephant's leaves. Elephant's ears. Elephants don't have leaves, do they? It is really enjoying the heat in here in the greenhouse. Uh, the ones out in the garden, and I have several, are oh, not even half that size for the leaves. Uh, obviously, it's a nice hot climate in Italy where it was developed, and it really enjoys the heat in here. Well, it's July 14th. I'm putting the final clips together for this video. Happy Bastille Day. This is a book that I recently purchased. I've always been scared to death to eat or to collect and eat wild mushrooms for fear that I would get the wrong ones. Uh, I really recommend the book. It is very much geared to the person like myself who has always been scared of, of eating wild mushrooms. And it narrows it down to a, quite a large collection of mushrooms that are easy to identify using the book and that are safe to eat. So I have been looking around and finally yesterday I picked my first mushrooms and ate them. Uh, I, I was out mushroom hunting with a, a woman who has recently moved to Campobello within the past year and she's very knowledgeable of, of mushrooms as well. I'm not going to give you the characteristics and tell you what the mushroom should look like and all of that because I am not an expert and I don't want to be responsible for someone picking the wrong mushroom and I, <laughs> this is not a, a paid uh, placement for the book. Um, I do recommend it. I think it's an excellent book if you're have that same interest that I have as far as wanting to eat wild mushrooms. And my very first mushroom was chanterelles. Now don't look at this and say, oh, I have seen those before, I'll go pick some. Uh, you really need to read, the, if not this book, some other guidebook. There are mushrooms that are a similar color and, and could be mistaken for a chanterelle. 
you need to know all of the all of the characteristics, which as I say, I'm not going to give because I don't want to be responsible for giving out the wrong information. But once you do know the characteristics, these are very easy to identify. And what surprised me is the amount of them that there are around here growing just on the side of, of trails in the park and whatever. I suppose I've walked by them all my life and didn't know that you could pick them and eat them. And I prepared them in a very simple way because I wanted to taste the, the flavor. I didn't put them in with anything with any other stronger flavor, and they were delicious. I sautéed them in butter with salt and pepper, and then I added uh, some heavy cream and reduced that down to make sort of a semi-thick sauce for them. And as you can see, I had them on a slice of my multigrain uh, sourdough bread, and they were delicious. I can hardly wait to pick some more. Before I forget to show it, that is the seed balm. Uh, I've done nothing but water it. It sort of has completely fallen apart, dissolved or whatever, and all of those little seedlings there are plants that grew out of it. I still don't have any idea what the smaller ones are, but the larger leaves definitely are lupins. Well, I want to do some harvesting today. There are a number of cucumbers that are, well, they're never going to be large. They're, they are the European gherkins. Five to six inches is, is about as large as they get. and I like them when they're even smaller than that. And some of them have managed to get beyond that. So I'll show you what I get when I, when I finish my picking in here. I want to make some pickles. I think I'll start with bread and butter pickles. And I need five pounds, uh, according to the recipe that I use. That's a little over two and, well, a little less, I guess, than two and a half kilograms. So anyway, I'm going to pick pickles, pick cucumbers, and I'll show you what I get. In the foreground there is, right there, uh, a marigold. A friend of mine gave me two marigold plants because I had two marigold plants ordered from Richter's and of course they died in the disaster. And these have done very well and they're already budded. Um, and by the way, Richter's gave me a full refund on, on everything that died, including the shipping and everything. I knew they would. They're a very, very reliable company. Well, not bad for the first picking. I'm really not sure if it's five pounds or not. By, by now, if I've remembered to do it, you should be seeing the weight on the screen. I'm going to weigh them when I get back home. If there isn't quite five pounds, I just refrigerate them for a day or two. Because now that these have been picked, the smaller ones on the vine seem to grow much quicker. I have my trail camera set up, trying to determine what it is that eats my mature squash plants. Right now the trail camera is probably taking a video of me. <laughs> um, it's been up for two nights now and so far I haven't captured anything on the screen. But let me show you what I'm talking about here. This bed next to Angel I have given up on. I am not putting anything back in there, it just continually gets eaten. What you're looking at over here, there is a squash plant in there. Uh, but the taller stuff is potatoes that I did not plant this year. There's some potatoes that were left over, so I would imagine they're being munched on by the voles. And there is a zucchini plant here that's still doing well. The other places is one, two, three, four, four holes where there should be squash plants, and they disappear. The entire plant disappears at night, uh, just eaten right down to the stubs. And that is... 10 feet, less than 10 feet from the bed I'm going to show you next. This bed never gets touched. Whatever it is, walks right past this and eats the squash plants in the other bed. And I've no, I don't think I've ever lost one out of this bed or maybe had some slug damage or something earlier on. Um, really strange. And I have three other smaller beds. I'll give you a glimpse off probably in a minute here. They're not really being attacked either. I'm beginning to think it's a deer. I uh, can't prove it yet, but I don't think it could be a rabbit, a rabbit, unless it's a whole family of rabbits, uh, an entire plant, everything disappearing in, in one night. It must be quite a large animal that's doing it. Well, this is the other Ruth Stoat section. Uh, one particular squash plant there is looking like it's <laughs> been beaten up. That's my fault. It was running off into the underbrush there, and I picked the vine back up and brought it over. So hopefully if it does bloom, I won't uh, 
I won't lose the, the squash, won't, won't be able to find it. But in the background there, you can, along with Angel, you can see the rhubarb is coming along nicely. That's the one that I started from seed uh, three summers ago, I guess. And the other little beds, there's a squash in bloom down there, and this, this is one of the zucchini plants here with two other squash plants, the winter squash plants, we've got three other winter squash plants beside it, I guess, but there's a, there's a blossom on the zucchini as well. But whatever it is, what I'm getting at, does not eat these plants, and doesn't eat the plants that are right next door to that particular bed. It's got its favorite area for its picnic. If the rain holds off for the next 20 minutes to half hour or so, I'm going to be picking peas. Finally, the pods have filled out. Um, the ones that you're looking at are the commercial variety. And the uh, ones that I was... I can't think of the name of them. The heirloom variety, Yorkshire Hero. I just thought of the name. Uh, they are producing. It's a smaller pod, not as many peas. And it's one of those varieties that just has the peed pods at the top of the plant. I'm just going to harvest them and eat them uh, along with these ones. I, I was thinking if it was something really special, I would save them and, and grow out the next year. But with that type of a plant, you need to have a much bigger area to get much of a yield. But I'll show you what I get when I finish picking here. Well, that isn't all peas. The cucumbers are still in the bottom of the basket. I just put the peas in on top. Uh, it's a really good harvest, though, as far as I'm concerned, for the first picking. Uh, there's peas left. I'm sure I missed some of the ones that were completely filled out, and there are ones that are still filling out, but I think the next picking, second picking, will be the last, so I'll probably just cut the plants down and take them out and pile them up somewhere and examine each plant for, for peas the next time I do it, but there's going to be fresh garden peas with dinner tonight. And this is an example of... of uh, the two varieties. I'm not sure what this one is. It's a commercially available variety. That I have seed packets there somewhere, but I didn't bother to go look it up. And the smaller one is the Yorkshire Hero. Smaller pod, less less peas in it, of course. I have cracked them open and eaten them. They do taste good, just as good as the other ones. I don't see any great difference in the flavor. But they're smaller pods and fewer pods per plant because it's one of those varieties that uh, for some reason puts 99% of its pods at the very top of the plant to bush plants, no trouble to harvest them. But, uh, I guess you'd have to have more garden space than I've got. Somebody else is inspecting the peas. You'd have to have more garden space than I've got to, to uh, grow just those, so I, I won't be saving them for seed. Look around at a couple of other things to get this lengthy video closed down. This is a look inside of my brassica cage. No damage from cabbage loopers, but nothing else seems to be happening. I have beautiful leaves. The first plants in the foreground here are cauliflower, and then you would see my broccoli, and behind that, cabbage. I don't know if the cabbage are heading up, but they're starting to look like they're going to head up. But nothing's happening on the broccoli or the cauliflower, at least not yet. I don't know, maybe they don't get enough sunlight because they're inside of this screened-in thing. Anyway, hopefully they'll produce later on in the in the year. I am seeing some damage on these bottom leaves here, but I just took off a couple of slugs. So before I close that back up, I'm going to put some slug pellets in there. These are the bush beans, uh, two varieties. The one in the foreground is Lewis, an, an heirloom uh, open pollinated variety, and the one in the background is a yellow wax, just a seeds that I bought at a garden center. Uh, so far they're not falling over or anything, and there are the beginnings of what looks like blossom buds, if you can see them. I'm showing you the right area or not, it doesn't make much difference I guess, but there, there are uh, the beginnings of blossom buds. So should start to see beans developing sometime in the next week or so. I still haven't had a ripe strawberry off of my strawberry plants that I grew from seed this year. Lots of green ones on there right now. The plant in the center had the first berry and it was looking really good. <laughs> Something ate the berry, ate the leaves, ate some of the blossoms off of just that particular plant. Uh, if it had been a rabbit it would have walked over in. Again, I'm thinking it's a deer. It just leaned down, liked the looks of that one, and devoured it. 
took out my overgrown butter crunch lettuce plants the other day, yesterday I guess, and put in the, the new transplants. This is the bed that was the asparagus bed uh, I showed earlier in the video. The squash plants are really growing quite nicely. They're trailing away here. You can see the one down there is coming out into the pathway. I think the two larger ones that are sort of diagonal to each other there, uh, this one and the one back in here, I think those are, are spaghetti squash plants that I bought at a garden center. And I can see the tag on the one that's in the front here. That, that is a red curry squash, one of the ones that I grew from seed. So I'm so surprised because I thought that manure that wasn't really aged all that well would um, you know, burn the plants. There is something happening to the leaves on the, on the uh, spaghetti squash. The outside of them are sort of yellow, but the plant itself just keeps getting bigger every day. Well, that has this thing pretty close to a half hour, if not over it, I guess. So I will shut this down and get it uploaded and say thank you very much for watching.